Yo, what is going on, everybody? It's your boy Sonny here, coming at you guys with another Never Winter video. And by the title and thumbnail, you already know what you clicked on. We are going to be talking about the roadmap of Never Winter. This was probably one of the biggest live streams Never Winter has had since the release of the game. Honestly, they have never brought before this kind of information for the up and coming mods. Um, <clears throat> so if you're new around here, make sure you hit that subscribe. The like button with notification bell on because you know I'm gonna be updating you guys as much as possible. Now, before I jump into the video, if you're a sensitive fuck, click off now because I'm gonna get raw, I'm gonna get emotional because I've been playing this game since it came out on console. I'm I'm not gonna beat around the bush, right? I'm gonna tell you how it is. If you don't like it or you don't wanna hear my opinion, click off the video now. It's as simple as that. But if you're still here and you probably do care and you wanna hear what I have to say and you wanna know more about the live stream. Then stay tuned, sit back, get yourself uh, some snacks, a cup of coffee, whatever you drink, and let's get it. So, first things first. This was over a two-hour fucking live stream. This thing was pretty long. Um, I didn't watch it live. I did watch it literally, like, as soon as it was over, be just because I missed it from the beginning. So, I didn't want to watch it, you know, any part after that. So, I just waited until it was over completely. Now... There was only one person I know on that live stream, okay? Now, I'm going to critique the live stream first. Number one, I don't know who the fuck those people were. Um, I only know who Nova was. I thought it was pretty funny that the one girl was like, I've only been playing a year, which I thought was kind of stupid, but I didn't put it together. But here's the thing. If you put something together out there that's this grand, regardless if it's your first time or not, I'm going to critique you. For references, if an NFL player or any professional athlete goes out on the court or goes to do what they got to do and they're hurt, that's not an excuse to me. If you were that hurt, sit your ass on the sideline. If you weren't ready to do this live stream, don't do the live stream. Take your time. So here we go. First things first. I don't know who those people were. Right. I only know who Nova was. I'm a little bit disappointed by that. You know, maybe these guys are big Twitch streamers. But for me, I honestly thought they would have some heavy hitters here on the YouTube platform, you know, maybe that's just my mistake because, you know, Nova, Garland, Nick Flo, Northside, Silvery, fucking Rainer. These are people I honestly thought they would have on. I, I, You guys, this is the biggest live stream you guys have. You have to come with it. And for me, the people there just weren't that interactive neither. It was kind of like there was no order. I get it. It's the first time. So I'm just going to say that's. You know, shout out to Willow for putting this together. I know it couldn't have been easy, but at the same time, if you're going to put this out there, you have to come with it. And these people, a lot of the things weren't related to the map. And a lot of the things I felt like they could have just waited. I think there was way more questions that should have been asked or that should have been answered. And, you know, it was just, it was up in the air. You know, some people are going to like it. Some people ain't going to like it. I'm in the middle. You know, I'm still reflecting on it. I'm kind of processing all the information because... It was all over the place. Not everybody was speaking as much. Um, it was just a mess, in my opinion. You know, I think they should have separated in the future. They need to have each person speak for a set amount of time. And then, you know, say they might say that person has a question that was already answered. Then they can ask another question and just have it flowing, you know, instead of one person speaking and then one person's cutting off that person and then they're apologizing. And then it's just... It was just all over the place. So that's the introduction of the live stream. Okay. That might offend some people or whatever. Now we're jumping into the bread and butter. On the screen, you guys can already see this is the map of the future of Neverwinter, right? We have mod 19, mod 20, and mod 21 all the way at the end. Whew. That was a lot of information. Okay. I had to get that beginning part out of the way because I wanted to express just how you know, the live stream as a whole was because it was honestly really hard to take notes just due to the fact of everything was everywhere. And there was a lot of things that I felt didn't even need to be addressed. So I got to make that point in the beginning of this video. So you guys know for the rest. Um, and maybe if any of these guys watch this video, please, you, I definitely think you should def, I know they said they would get other content creators on there, but for the first one, I really thought they should have had better, like, not better, but bigger, in my opinion. You know, I don't use Twitch, so maybe that's why I don't know these people. Maybe they are big. But I know yesterday there was a couple people 
that they had bigger audience because of this live stream and then they were doing giveaways. So I can't imagine that they get that many consistent views every time they go live. I find that very hard to believe. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they do, and I just don't know who I'm, what I'm talking about. But anyway, I digress. Okay, number one. Oh, there, I don't even know where to start. Let's just start on the map, guys. This is a ton of information, right? So we're just going to go through everything. So right off the bat, there's no changes until Mod 19, okay? The Saga of Zero, right? So if you look at number seven, there's a Zero Trial. Zero story mode, siege event reworked, profession new masterwork recipes, big surprise, new event, and masquerade of liars evolved. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. Scaling system evolution. Okay, this was one of the big things that they kept talking about. Um, where I don't want to put this. See, it was just it, the, the live stream was just a lot. Like it was going from one question. And then literally somebody else would ask that question and, and then I, I was just – my brain is still rattled. Like even after I watched it, I let the information process. It was just so much information to kind of withhold and even I wrote everything down that they were talking about. But it's just they were all over the place. So it really makes it harder for us other content creators to go over this information and provide it to you guys. So I do apologize right now. Um, scaling evolution system, Zao trial unlocked, okay? The big thing that they're making is they want to make two separate trials, right? The problem is if they want to make an easy and a hard mode is what's the sense in doing the hard mode if you can get the same rewards as the easy mode? And Chris made that apparent that you still have to keep the rewards similar or else what's the sense in running the easy mode, right? So that's going to be one of the big problems I see. Next is the story mode. I'm just, ah, the campaign for me, it is what it is. I just run it to do the boons or whatever to unlock the dungeon. I don't really watch the cutscenes that much. I'm not really intertwined with the campaign. I think it's kind of all over the place. I don't really think it affects Neverwinter as a whole that much. Maybe there's some people out there that are really heavy-oriented campaign players. But for me, I'm not. Siege event reworked. Now, this was pretty big. Um, They want to make it like the Hell Pit rewards, which I enjoy. I thought the Hell Pit rewards were cool. Um... The flames, they were actual rewards that you wanted. And one of the discussions was they wanted to now introduce those type of rewards and other, event, uh, other events sorry, in the future. So that was pretty interesting to me. I thought that would be pretty cool. It's about time. Let's just make that clear. It's about fucking time Neverwinter listened to the community. Okay? Playing since Mod 5 on console, if you've been playing on PC before that, it, Neverwinter has never been this open about anything. It took them years and years to finally listen to the feedback of the fucking community so i want to give them a round of applause okay i don't know what sense this makes that why it took so long but there's no point in dwelling on the past we're here now and you know let's just hope the future holds better than the past right now you guys might say well sonny you skipped over scaling system evolution no i'm gonna get to that real quick i'm just trying to go over my notes system now, they didn't specifically touch on this, to be honest. I felt they should have went through each individual thing and talked about it, but they didn't. That's what I'm saying. The live stream was very all over the place. So what I'm going to assume with this system um, evolution of the scaling is the problem with Neverwinter is scaling the dungeons down or scaling people up to the specific zones. And the problem is it's all over the place. So what they're trying to do is make it more linear so your stats better reflect it. And, you know, one of the big things with Neverwinter with some of the events is the scaling was just shit. So it, it made it too hard. It made it – it was better to unequip some of the gear you had and put on lower item gear and still run it better than using the gear you had on now. So that's one of the changes that wanted, they want to make in effect. Moving on to professions, new masterwork recipes. Okay. Professions for me are not that important. I know there's a lot of people out there who love professions, and it is what it is. Um, I've never been one in professions, so to have a whole episode three dedicated to uh, professions is not what something I'm looking forward to. Maybe this might get me involved in professions now. We will just have to wait and see. And now under that, you're going to see big surprise. Now, Nova brought this to the attention. He's the only one that said something about this. There's no new class, as you can see right away. Now, I don't think they planned on releasing any new class, to be honest. 
from the way when Nova answered that question, they were like baffled. Um, he's like, well, I don't see, but he's like, well, the big surprises are we don't want to give them away. But to me, even then, it didn't seem like they were going to bring out a new class. Uh, maybe they will now. I'm not sure what they could potentially bring out. Um, but I don't think so. Don't hold your hopes up too high for a new class, regardless of what. Um, I can see the big surprise coming in with a new class with the masterwork rework and new recipes and stuff with the professions. I don't see that coming in together like that. I don't. I don't feel that's right timing. You know what I mean? If you're going to release a new class, it has to be a bold statement. It has to flow. And I don't see it making sense to release a new class in episode three. But I could be wrong. You know what I mean? Neverwinter does what they do. Okay. New event in episode four. No information on that new event. Like I said, um, a lot of this stuff wasn't talked about. I don't, you know, I know, like I said, it, it, it was kind of hard. It was the first time they did something like this. But um, they missed a lot of information here that I felt that they would have asked more questions. So hopefully next time they ever do something like this. Um, no offense to these people, but I'm, I'm just a firm. I just tell it how it is. You know, I don't beat around the bush. Masquerade of Lies of Lairs evolved. Like I said, that means right here, I wrote it down because Nova asked this question too. Nova asked legitimately, in my opinions, the questions that people wanted to hear. I felt he should have talked more. Um, I know I catched his live stream towards the end when he said he didn't want to overstell people. But bro, you're the fucking prophet of Neverwinter, my guy. When people want information, they go to you, man. You are the one of the faces for Neverwinter. I feel this guy should have way more talking time. Um, he knows what the people want to hear. He knows what he's asking, you know, and for me, he should have been the main focal point of this live stream. But, you know, I get it. It is what it is. I'm not going to dwell about it because he asked the question of what is evolved and what does rework mean? You know, like all these different things. And I'm trying to find it here in my notes because let me tell you something. I made a lot of different points and, um, oh man, now I can't find it. Shit. Cause I want to rework. No. No. Okay. Unfortunately, for some odd reason, I cannot find it. Oh, right here. Rework. Better rewards cleanup. Okay. So for the new Liars of Masquerade, hopefully we'll see some improved rewards like the Hell Pit again. Um, but there's only one way to wait and see. Now, speaking of rewards, there's no Summer Festival, guys. The Summer Festival is going to be the same this year. Their excuse was Summer Festival is right around the corner. Um, to me, that's kind of a bullshit excuse. How hard is it to change the rewards for the Summer Festival instead of just copying and pasting from every other previous year? So if you're looking for new Summer Festival rewards or anything different, you got your hopes down low. <laughs> Apologize there. Um, that was one of the things I was a little surprised about. Like No changes to one of the biggest events of the year. I'm disappointed in Neverwinter. I don't see why you couldn't have added that regardless of everything else that's going on. So we're going to have to wait another whole year to see any changes to the Summer Festival, which is it's disappointing. It really is. Moving on to new story arc foreshadowing, existing dungeon reworked. OK, so pretty much they were saying there in terms of the old dungeons, you know, bringing back the old CN, making the dungeons viable. These are all things that they were discussing. Um, and to me, those are things that I want to hear. Not everybody wants to run Tom, Lom, you know, whatever the case is. Some people prefer the older dungeons, but there's no point in running them. So maybe with this new existing dungeon rework, um, they will make it so you can run whatever dungeon you want and still be able to get viable rewards. Expanded game state tuning capabilities. I don't think they touched upon that, so I, ha I cannot answer that right now. Uh, I do apologize. I don't know what that means. So expanded game state tuning capabilities. Uh, I don't think they touched upon number 11, guys. And I don't know what that means because these are very broad terms on here. 
And this is what I mean. For next time, I definitely think they should have went through the whole entire timeline better. But um, yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna have to wait and see with that one. Or hopefully, another person drops another video. Um, maybe Nova. I know he's gonna drop a video, obviously, about the whole map, and he's gonna do a hell of a lot better job since he probably knows way more than I do. Winter Festival evolved. Same thing here. Um, better rewards. Right, instead of the same winter festival every year, hopefully next year we don't get one gift or two gifts for the entirety of the winter festival. But who knows, right? They could just say all these things, and what do they mean by rework? You know, does that mean the people in the store changes? You know, are you still only going to give us two rewards for the entire, you know, three weeks or two weeks or whatever the hell it was? We just will have to wait and see. Again, episode one big surprise and all new achievement system. OK, now for me, I'm not really an achievement person, but one of the things that they brought up was, you know, you can't get some of the older achievements. They said they want to make it possible and they want to make achievements uh, worth rewards. But um, if you didn't know, there is rewards for your achievement. There's a sub app called Art Games and you can exchange your achievement reward points for in-game items. Um, they never they haven't updated that app in forever. So the new achievements don't count. Maybe that's what they mean in terms of that or, or maybe update the store a little bit because you can get a heavy Mystic Twilight, if I'm not correct, that blue um, Epic Mount if you do all the achievements now and have enough points. So I'm not sure if that's what they mean or just like every time you do a re uh, achievement, you can actually get in-game rewards from the Neverwinter game itself as opposed to having that third-party app. And again, big surprise. Don't know what that means. Um, we're just going to have to wait and see with that. Again, they didn't discuss the story arc, of course, for Mod 21. Uh, not Mod 21, sorry, for Mod 20. Um, I don't know if they don't know what it is, but, you know, their thing was they don't want to spoil it. Whatever the case may be. Moving on, another new event. I don't know what that is. But we did skip over existing skirmishes reworked. Okay. This was one of the another thing about the dungeon reworks, uh, making it you know more scalable, making it more fun to run, making the rewards more beneficial. Those are the things that I wanted to talk about, and those are the things I'm glad they did cover. So that was pretty important to me, um, because I think it's about time that there were some changes to the dungeons, to the skirmishes, to the trials, all that stuff. Okay, new arc foreshadowing content. Oh, excuse me. My voice just cracked there. Holy shit. And a big surprise. So I just went through this whole thing. Now, we're going to get into some of the notes here that I took down. So bear with me. Okay. That's why I said this video is going to be a little bit longer. But I want to make sure that I bring you guys as much information in this video as possible. Just in case you didn't watch the live stream. Or maybe you did and your brain just can't process that much information at one time because that live stream was two hours like i said it was all over the place so just for even us content creators out there it was a little hard to follow here we go the biggest thing that for me i don't pvp but there is no pvp on this map now chris said they want to maybe have their own subcategory for pvp arena i don't see that likely being the case in the future um but, you know, one of their things was one of the big surprises could be work to PvP. I don't see that happening. Um, if there was going to be a rework to PvP, I don't know why you wouldn't just state it on the timeline itself to hype people up instead of just making a surprise. Because for me, if you're going to surprise a PvP thing, um, not many people are going to be even ready for it. But if you, in my eyes, had that, you would have enticed people to get PvP ready now and brought in an influx of people. So I don't know how they think of things. Maybe in their head they think it would be better to surprise people. But for me, um, I don't even know. You know, he said they might. But, you know, the big surprise could be anything. Um, no mention of Mythic Mounts was another thing for me. There has been Legendary Mounts in the game for uh, over a couple years now. So I felt they definitely needed to introduce some kind of new mount. I didn't hear anything about that. Um, no new class again. Just to let you guys know, there was seven to nine, what was that, nine people in the chat itself. 
Okay. Another thing is a better community, right? They feel the game as a whole. Let's just say we'll use Garland's references. Timmy over there looks like he's not wearing the right gear and everything. And as the game itself, I feel it's their fault. The leveling system is not linear enough. You know, if you power level your way through one zone, you're just going to skip to the next zone to get the more experience rather than finishing that one zone where they should have it. It's linear. You know, you do a certain amount of quests in a row, you know, so you're not missing out anything. The increase in gear. So when you do hit that level cap of 80, you're a lot more ready. And another thing that I've seen was an issue was the camp, the companions. A lot of players who are new don't know about the bondings. I feel they have to enforce that on players more. Um, enforce that arguments are better than, you know, any striking companion. These are things that they should tell the players better and get those players ready to appreciate and reach that end game goal rather than, you know, when you're public queuing and these players don't have the right gear or they just don't have the right equipment on. That's the that's the game's fault because they don't do enough information explaining it because not everybody's going to look up videos. Not everybody, you know, plays the game to go full throttle with it, but you should make it more uh, easier and more viable for those people who just want to casually play, right? Easier end game, right? That was another thing. Scaled back dungeons. Let's just touch together those two things. Easier end game. This is going to be one of the problems, okay? End game as itself, when you want to say you want to make it easier to get to end game. Now, this is a broad term because what does end game mean, right? Does that mean all rank 15s? Or does that mean you just unlocked all the dungeons and you know you're ready to run the dungeon? Because in my eyes, easier end game means easier max level, easier rank 15s, or whatever the case may be. And for that, how could you do that? Because the game as a whole isn't based towards end gamers, right? It's based towards new players. So does that mean they're going to change the way of the future where there's going to be more content for you towards us end game players out there who don't necessarily need the AD, right? When you say of an end game player, they don't really need AD. They're just making AD, right? Scaled back dungeons. Um, a big thing was Tom and making it easier and making it more accessible to each player. Now, they were saying some bullshit, right? They were saying every class in the game has completed Tom, right? They, I think they need some new fucking data. Um, people only want CWs, TRs, HRs, right? And they only want you to run a certain way. So I can't see them saying a whisper and knife rogue is a viable option in Tom. I don't... And, um, I don't see that being the case. I mean, maybe one, I don't know if they say like, and I don't know how many time completion groups there are today. They don't answer questions like that. That's the one thing I'm a little worried about is they don't share their information like that because they're always saying, well, from our end, it looks like players are completing it on other classes. Well, I think that's bullshit, unfortunately. And I, you just see the same people asking for the same thing for each new module. So to me, I think they definitely need to fix that. So maybe with this new scaled back dungeon, but then here comes the problem of making it too easy. And then is the easier one going to have the same one as the hard rewards? And then if you say, well, we're going to scale back the dungeon, does that mean you're going to lessen the mechanics? So then how does that even get you ready for the hard one? Because if the mechanics ain't the same, what's the sense of practicing on the easy and the hard one isn't the same as the easy, right? It's just going to be like you're learning the mechanics all over again. OK, um, they asked about multiple guild joining. Unfortunately, they said their system can't handle it. Um, maybe in the future, that could be a thing that just was kind of glossed over a little bit. Like I said, no event change to the summer festival, new scaling, meaning, you know, the leveling, scaling, scaling back for dungeons, scaling up and down, depending on where you're at in the game. Um, event adjusted dungeons are completed redone rework to the skirmishes like I said all that before you know making it so that it's more viable to run the um, dungeons and the skirmishes achievement changes we already talked about that siege event reworks right um, complete rework to the rewards um, this is pretty important for me I feel if you're going to make all these changes to the dungeons, you also have to make changes to the rewards because there's no sense in running endgame dungeons 
and you're still getting black opals. You're still getting – you're not making your money back on the chest, right? And you can maybe say, well, every dungeon run you're not going to make your money back. But I'm going to say like eight out of ten times if you don't re-roll the chest, you're not making your money back. On that first initial chest open, you're not making your money back, okay? And I think that needs to change. You should be able to leave – be able to make your money back to buy more legendary dragon keys to run more dungeons, right? I think it should just be kind of a rinse and repeat cycle because then you have more people running dungeons and stuff like that. Tales of Old Event, um, that was one of the things that somebody asked about. Um, I can't really see that as being a big thing. The books are getting nerfed, and I don't know what else kind of rewards you can bring. Maybe he said you can bring new rewards to it. Maybe a different artifact set that might be viable again, but I'm not sure. Okay, help it. This was another big question to me because they advertise that you can get a legendary mount. Well, unfortunately, the next time we could see it is May. That's a pretty far away. Okay, so what does that mean to me? Is that it's probably going to be most likely impossible to get that legendary mount within a year, right? We just had it in. What are we in? We just had it in January. February, March, April, May. Okay. That's four months. If you say the next time you're going to do it again is the next four months, that's only three. Then another four months, that's only four. So in my eyes, that's that's kind of a long way to wait for a legendary mount. Um, so maybe they'll bring it out more. I don't want to say more. Um, uh, what's the word I want to use here? I'm trying to think. Or maybe what the reward changes as well is when you do the siege event or other rewards, they'll have the same items. And then you can also use that currency on that event. So not necessarily have to wait for the hell pit event. That could be the only thing I could see maybe them doing because if you just can only get that legendary mount on the hell pit, it's going to be really hard and it's going to be really um, demoralizing in my eyes to even get it if it's just going to take so long to even get it. New, te uh, new test and server plans for the closed beta. Tom was the first time they did something like that. They say they want to keep that going. To me, that's good. It gets rid of all the bugs and everything like that. So when it releases on console and PC, it's much smoother. Um, new combat system, bounce class, right? No new reworked powers or changes. So if you don't like the combat system, you don't like how just... There's really only one way to play the class. Unfortunately, we're not getting no changes soon. Um, Nova asked that question, and their thing is they feel there is flexibility as it is now, which is bullshit. Um, there's only one way to play the class, and that's it. If you want to do maximum DPS, and if you don't do DPS, nobody wants to run with you. As simple as that. So to me, um, then maybe they're going to say they can change some of the powers but even if they increase the damage on some of the powers, if they're not rivaling the best powers, then there's no sense in even using them, right? Everybody just wants to do max DPS. They want to get in and out of the dungeon. So maybe those other powers are viable, but if they're not as strong as the more powerful ones, if that makes sense, then there's no sense in even using them, right? Because then you're just losing out on damage. And a lot of people say that the old system, there is only one way to play the class. But that's not true. There is literally three different Paragon feats. Three different Paragon classes. There is Renegade, Domiturgen, there is, um, and then the other one, Oppressor, I believe. And even with the other classes, there was different, there was more flexibility because with each one was different things, right? One was DPS, one was buff, one was um, PvP. So to me, now that there's only really one way to play, each class is a little demoralizing, right? If you're going to make a tank barbarian, you're going to use the same feats. Everybody's going to usually have the same feats. If you're making a barbarian DPS, everybody's going to have the same feats. So to me, there's no flexibility in that. And for them not to change any of that, it's a little it's a little punch in the gut. You know, I can't sit there and, and I just have to move on with it, right? Um... We already talked about time could be easier. Streamline leveling. Like I said, we already talked about that. Changes to the queue. Changes to get AD. Uh, I don't really think the game has a problem with getting AD. If you just know what you're doing, there's plenty of videos out there on how to make AD. Now, the problem is people just want things handed to them. 
And I'm just going to be real about it because you can get your 100,000 a day easily. Just run the dungeon queues, right? If you do the dungeon queues every day, you'll have your max refinement of 100K. And then if you keep accumulating that, you're going to get extra. And then you're just going to build up that money over time. That's not including running anything from the dungeons. That's not getting the chest. That is just strictly running the bonus AD that you get from running each dungeon queue. You can make 100K. Then whatever you get from Lom or Tom or whatever other dungeons you're running, that's just bonus AD. So to me, making AD really isn't a problem. Maybe it's even for a new player. I, I really can't see the issue too much. Um, but, you know, one of the things was, um, I don't remember who it was, but some one of the ladies was like, well, you know, it should be easier to make AD. I don't think so. I don't know what they could do to make it easier. I don't know what you mean easier. I don't know if you just want them to give you AD. I think there's plenty of ways. Maybe some people are going to disagree with this opinion. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't see the problem with getting AD. You just have to play the game. And if you don't play the game, you don't get the AD. I think it's as simple as that, right? One of the ideas that somebody thought was custom craft them, um, which was a little – Silly, I thought. Uh, I don't really see the purpose of it. He wanted to put your name on the stuff you made. So say if somebody goes to inspect you, they can say, hey, he got it from this guy. Uh, I don't really see the whole purpose behind that. But hey, whatever. It was just something brought up. And I'm just going to tell you guys it. Uh, group and solo content and queue content um, potentially server wide rewards. OK, I thought this was pretty big. Because when you run the campaign, you just do it by yourself. Now, I'm not sure if they mean when you do the campaign, there's going to be missions that you can do or you have to do as a group, per se. And it can only be done as a group. And then same thing with uh, queued content, right? Is there stuff you're going to have to queue just for the campaign itself? Like this wasn't touched upon as much as I would like to have. So anything I'm saying right now is just speculation. Um, this was kind of more just glossed over and just kind of left for you to determine itself, you know. Um, you know, we're getting down to the end here, guys. I'm almost done going over all my notes. So don't worry. We're just about to wrap up this video. It is a pretty long. We're going on 33 minutes. I think this is going to be one of my longest videos on my channel. So hopefully you guys are enjoying this, though. Um, I know it's going to be a little bit boring in the background because I'm just going to leave up the map of this game so you guys can maybe look at it yourself but um yeah let's talk about dungeon time right this was to me pretty important they were discussing how back in the day everybody just ran temple the spider because it was the quickest dungeon and it got you ad well why wouldn't you why would you run another dungeon waste more time get the same ad or make even less money than running one dungeon so to me they have to make it where each dungeon is proportional to one another but if you're going to make each dungeon proportional you also have to make the money proportional you can't say you can't have one dungeon you can't have every dungeon take 30 minutes and then that one dungeon that takes an extra you know the one that takes all right let's just say you have dungeon a and b you can't have dungeon a be 30 minutes and dungeon b be 30 minutes but a gives you less money right makes no sense another thing is follow path you know, to get the rewards. So speed running, right? They were thinking about, you know, the longer, not the longer you're in the dungeon, because I don't feel that should affect your rewards, but not cutting out any parts in the dungeon, will that give you increased rewards? And I think that's a legitimate thing moving forward. I feel that if you take the time and do every mob in the dungeon and kill everything in the dungeon and not just run door to door, but individually take your time, I feel like you should be rewarded for that, right? Because the problem is people just breeze through, you know, they'll they'll just, you know, run through the mobs and run all the way to the end or skip mobs just because you get the same rewards. So if you entice people to say, hey, kill everything, do everything, you'll get better rewards. Well, you're going to see an influx of people wanting to do everything. OK, then the last thing we're going to talk about um, is shortening mod time from PC to console. Right. This was a big thing to me. Now, is this going to be possible in the future? Maybe. Um, but the problem is, you know, the PC get their beta. And PC was always ahead of us, right? So it's a little bit harder to keep us on the same page, right? 
I feel PC is the one who gets to test out everything. You know, we are getting mod 18. Not that much farther away than PC did, so the time elapsed did kind of minimize. But their goal is to get us all at the same time. Now, for them, like they said, it would make it easier on them just to give everybody the console release at uh, not just the console, but everybody release at the same time. But I think that's pretty much it wrapped up. Um, you know, there was a couple small things that they talked about, nothing that I thought was like crazy. Um, sometimes they repeated themselves, or sometimes. You know, that question that they asked was already already answered in a matter. Um, so like I said, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and wrap everything up because we're about to finish off here. If you made it to the end, um, leave a comment down below saying hashtag 2020, right? Or yeah, hashtag 2020, right? If you made it this far, leave a comment down below saying hashtag 2020. Let's see who all my true fans are made it this far to the end. But yeah, if you guys did enjoy, like I said, this was one of the longer videos. This was a live stream that I thought was needed, but could have also been worked out, you know. Uh, shout out to everybody, you know, not to, not, I know I did say my thoughts and everything I say just comes from a place of love and passion for the game. This is no disrespect to those people, um, no disrespect to anybody out there, but I'm just going to let you know how it is. I'm not the type of guy to beat around the bush. I'm going to tell you how it is. Hopefully next time it's better. Hopefully next time more organized. Hopefully next time they bring in some more heavy hitters. I thought they would have brought in some, uh, you know, maybe these guys are heavy hitters. I don't want to keep stressing this point out. Even down in the comments, let me know who these people are. If you, um, Like I said, I mainly only do YouTube. I'm not into the streaming. I'm not into Mixer. You know, so maybe those guys are pretty big over there. But, yeah. Let me know what you guys thought of the live stream if you watch it. If you watched it, sorry. And let me know what you guys think of this video. Like I said, I apologize for being it so long. But believe me, there was a lot of information on this live stream. I tried to condense it down from two hours to what are we going on? You know, about 35 roughly. This is a pretty long outro. So let me go ahead and wrap this shit up. It's been your boy Sen here, and I will check you guys out in the next one. Peace the fuck out.